Good morning. It is so good to see all of you this morning as we gather together for worship on the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Following a number of weeks of preparing job postings and interviewing candidates, discernment and prayer, the wardens and I are delighted to inform you that we have a new parish administrator for the next uh, contracted year, Miss G. Zhu. While we did have a, a number of highly qualified candidates, for which I give thanks, uh, G comes to us with an administrative background and ongoing relationship with the church. Uh, so G will begin work in the office tomorrow. It'll take some time for her to get settled in. So I encourage you to extend a warm welcome and lots of patience as we go. The Bells will be hosting a holiday bazaar on Saturday, November 12th, and that will be with a luncheon and a bake table. Tickets will be on sale for uh, $10 per person. The Bells are also asking for donations of nearly new items, but not clothing, please. Please contact Xavier Diaz for more information on that. And there's uh, information on the bulletin board in the Narthex today as well. Our warm thanks to Sheila, who personally gathered up all of the food donated at Thanksgiving and before that, and piled it into her car this past week. I've heard reports that it filled her trunk and floor and back seat, which is what she was hoping for. So we've met the challenge. Well done. I've heard reports. Um, Sorry, our gracious thanks to everyone who donated non-perishable food this year. Your generosity has gone a long way to serve people within our own community who really did need that help desperately. A couple of other updates. Danielle. Danielle's doing very, very well. She's actually going home on Wednesday. Uh, it doesn't mean that she's not going to be without another whole year of physio and all those kinds of things, uh, but she has been able to take several unassisted steps without her wheelchair walker. Um, she, she's eating really well. She, physio's going well. She's still in a lot of pain in her shoulder, I think mostly from sleeping in the bed that she's in with the kind of pillows that they have at, at any healthcare uh, center that we know of. So please do continue your prayers for her. Uh, she was more than humbled by the money that was raised for her to take care of her over this last little while. We raised over $3,500 uh, for her, and that's been given to her in installments, and she is very, very grateful and she wanted to extend her love to all of you. Finally, thank you for continuing to wear your masks. We've just been hearing in the news once again there's an uptick in COVID numbers. Hospitals are filling over 4,700 people in hospital. So we knew this was going to happen. It's probably going to continue to happen. We're aware of that. But I want to commend you for being so diligent in wearing your mask. It just it protects you and it protects everybody around you, all your brothers and sisters here in the building and beyond. So thank you for that. I think we're gonna keep it up for the next little while. I invite you now to take a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning.
The land from which we gather is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabek, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is governed by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Treaty. Today, Toronto is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. Would you please stand as we prepare to sing our opening song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We now pray for our children. Jesus, our friend and constant companion, be with our children as they go to school and all their other activities. Keep them safe from injury, disease, and bullying. May they know your presence with them at all times and trust in your love. Amen. Mm -hmm. Almighty never living God, increase in us your gift of faith that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for our first reading? A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 19. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decree are my study. I am wiser than the elders because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgment because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. Let us pray. God, as your only Son revealed, you still at work in your creation. So through Christ, your living word, enable us to know your love and to share it with others. We ask this in his name. Amen. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing that from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in his view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, 
convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of Christ. Speak to you this morning, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've had a number of opportunities to witness and to listen to the tragic and yet hopeful stories of our Indigenous brothers and sisters through online forums, films, residential tours. One of the purposes of this is so that we might hear and understand and see our history through a different lens, a repentant lens, a more just and compassionate lens, and to learn about some of the unique traditions and ways of doing things that make Indigenous cultures so beautiful and blessed. One of the unique gifts is the passing down of stories. Generations of Indigenous people have been gifted in the art of storytelling something that we could learn from and embrace in a deeper way. In the tradition of oral storytelling, there's a notion that when a story is written down, it ceases to be the living, changing thing that was passed down from one storyteller to the next. In oral tradition, the story is alive in the imagination of the storyteller inflected by who the storyteller is and adapted for its listeners. 
the story is told as it only can be by that teller in that setting. And when the story is set down in writing, it loses the ability to move and change and transform. And really, this isn't so different from how we pass along our faith tradition. It's like an ember passed from one person to the next, and each person adds their own breath in order to stoke it and keep it alive and pass it on. We couldn't live deeply into our incarnate faith without seeing this story embodied in others and practicing it in our own community. Stories of those who've gone before us inspire us. The encouragement of those around us keeps us going. In our text from 2 Timothy today, Paul writes to his beloved student. We know the text well. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. And then he reminds Timothy, rekindle the gift of God that is within you. The text is written as Paul nears the end of his life, and he's imparting all that wisdom and the encouragement for the journey to the next generation. His words are the treasure, the treasure that he wants his student to remember and to continue sharing because this treasure has sustained him. So he reminds Timothy to hold fast to the good teaching that he's received and that it will give him strength in times of suffering. Paul instructs Timothy to share this good news with others because they need it too. In other words, keep the ember alive, stoke it up so that it may sustain you and be passed along. Now, while our holy scriptures may have been written down and canonized centuries ago, it is certainly no lifeless thing. We touched briefly on this very topic in our Q&A section in the e-blast at Thanksgiving. And for those of you who might have missed it, the question was, why were the readings so depressing this week? If you didn't get a chance to read it, I encourage you to go back and review it. Because we're told that all scripture is inspired by God. The literal translation from the Greek is more like all scripture is God-breathed. It's endlessly living, relevant, able to speak to us in every single era. To have the breath of God is to have life. And while scripture has been misused by humans in every generation, the Holy Spirit keeps showing up, guiding us, changing us, transforming us. The story of God's unwavering love is no less true now than it was at the beginning of creation. The enlivening breath of God is no less active in our lives right now. Scripture and storytelling shape our vision to recognize and discern God's invitation and movement in the world around us. It can help us to look around and say, how, how is the Holy Spirit moving here? How is he speaking to us through our children, through our leaders? Does this feel like the life-giving breath of God? And the text also tells us that the times will not always be favorable or receptive to the life-giving breath of God. But being immersed in scripture and interpreting it in our communities and our studies will help us to recognize the call of the Holy Spirit and to be part of helping scripture come alive for other people. When we are persistent in our prayer, when we are steady in our faith, in our pursuit of justice, we add to the embodiment of the story about the widow from our gospel that Kathy read today. This widow who continually knocks on the judge's door and expects an answer. 
or when we welcome with wide open arms those who've wandered away, especially during COVID. We give more life to the story of the prodigal son and his loving father. When we forgive, when we advocate for others or rejoice in God's goodness, we become part of the stories that Jesus tells us about what God's kingdom is actually like. We embody the slow, steady work of the love of God, a tradition that is not perhaps the flashiest in every generation, but one that's always needed. In recognizing the gift of love that we've been given and sharing it with one another through the telling of these stories and committing to live into it, this is our treasure. It's the ember that we received from our mothers and our grandmothers, our fathers and our grandfathers, our teachers in the faith to which we are called to bring first ourselves and then share with others. Our text from Timothy urges us today, proclaim the message, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully, there's an invitation here for every single one of us, all of us. Our stories, both scriptural, but also our experiences of how God has changed and transformed each one of us. These are all part of the broader story that God is telling. And each of us is invited to call attention to the love that shapes the arc of that story. Each of us adds our own inflection, our own context to the story. Here is what the ancient message of God's unwavering love looks like right here, right now, in this time, in this space. So what stories of God's love stoke the ember of persistent faith within you? Are you sharing these stories with your children and your grandchildren? What goodness have you seen or known that deserves to be told to others around you? How might you embody the faith that has been passed down to you personally as only you can? How might our community tell the story of how the Holy Spirit is showing up here, breathing new life and stirring us into the ministry beyond our own selves? Each of us is a storyteller in this tradition, carrying the witness of the saints who've gone before us and passing on the wisdom and the encouragement and the love that sustains the next generation. So, as Paul tells us, proclaim the message. Do the work of an evangelist. Carry out your ministry fully. Embody the good news of God's love that we've received so that others may see it and know it too. Persist in telling the stories that help us to see and discern the life-giving breath of God moving through this generation and the next. Kindle the gift of God that is within you, equipping you and encouraging you for living out your amazing purpose. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite you to stand as we confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and for the world. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, just as the writer to the Hebrews says, and without faith it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And this, our faith, is our justification to you. Help us who know that you are real deepen our faith of you and let us say, Lord of our faith, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Iglesia Anglicana de la Region Central de America, in our Diocese for the Bishop's Committee on Healing Ministries, and in our Deanery for St. Dunstan of Canterbury, the Reverend Gam McCaffrey, incumbent. In our Community of Aging Court for the Clergy and People of Wesley Chapel Free Methodist Church, and in our outreach ministries for the breakfast program here at St. Timothy's. When all seem bleak, when all seem heartbreaking, let us always be reminded that our faith is in you and gain strength. Lord of our faith, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we lift up all to you who are down in despair by illness, circumstances, loneliness. Show them by your steadfast love that you have not abandoned and you never will do so. Renew their faith in you that they may be healed. Lord of our faith. Lord, we pray for all who lead in worship of you here at St. Timothy's. For Andrew and Kevin, our bishops. For Andrea, Kathy, Elaine, and all others whom you have called into your service, especially our new administrator, G. Joe. That their faith in you is not just good and right, but at the center of their souls. Lord of our faith, merciful Father, we pray for your children who are in desperate need of your healing will. Danielle and family, Pamela, David, Elaine, Merle, Verly and Cyril, Joan, Jason, Anita, Dorothy, Michael and Julie, Evelyn, Lorna, and any others either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Let their faith in you be strengthened and that by your Holy Spirit guide them that they may have your peace. Lord of our faith. Gracious God, we give you thanksgiving for all those on the parish prayer cycle this week. Cicely and William, Isaline, Wellington, that their faith might be used by you to glorify your name. We also pray for the altar guild that they might continue to use uh, you might continue to use them in your beautiful works, a reflection of your beauty, that all might be in awe. Lord of our faith, gracious God, you are the ultimate investor, knowing that in creating us free beings, you had someone to share your love with, and though we might turn away and did, did turn astray. For as the psalmist writes, he remembers that they are but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. You are the one who is utterly faithful to us. So let your name be praised and keep showing us how remarkable that is. In Jesus' name we pray.
My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. With peace, 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 peace. Eternal God, your word inspires our faith. 
As we give of our time, talent, and money in person and online, may we offer you our praise and trust you in all things. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Be it is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Child of God, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night, he freely gave himself to death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread, this cup, Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Would you please stand as we pray? God of peace, you've nourished us in this sacrament with the body and blood of Christ. May we who have taken holy things keep faith in our hearts and in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision.
go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.